You hang out with those other bigger boys, they're throwing you down a waterfall, all right? Wow. Hello and welcome to the Abroad in Japan podcast. Probably the best way of learning about life in Japan without actually being in Japan. I'm your host, Chris Broad. We're joined, as always, by England's top Japan enthusiast, Mr. Pete Dawson himself. Pete, how the devil are you doing? What's going on? I'm good. Back in the day when we started this podcast, I didn't have to worry about the day. Um, what I look like. And I still don't worry about what I look like. But every now and again, I'll catch a glimpse of what the people will be able to see on, on the YouTube and uh, I've just noticed that my uh, my nipples that are usually very pointy anyway uh, are even pointier <laughs> than usual. So uh, I'll apologize now. I-, I once did a job um, for a video game company. Um, it was for the ill-fated Google Stadia, which lasted about three months. Oh, God, Google Stadia. Google just stuffed into their big bin of ideas. Um, and uh, <laughs> the the floor manager for the shoot um, went came over and went, uh, it was me and Kimi Rackinen, I think. Um, I think it was Kimi Rackinen? A- anyway. Um and he came up to me and went, uh, mm. could, you, um, could you accompany me to the green room, please, Peter? We went back to the green room and, uh, and she told me that my nipples were too pointy <laughs> and I've brought some tape and can we tape up your nipples so nobody can see your nipples? Release the Peter too! Release the nip nip too, for crying out loud. Um, so far, the last episode hasn't got demonetized. Yeah. No. Isn't that lovely? Yay. I mean... Yeah, sure. I mean, I spoke about it last last week, and you know, I apparently droned on about stuff. But sometimes you got to drone on about stuff, and yeah. Otherwise, we're just this candy cane, marshmallow munching, <laughs> load of soft <laughs> toy plushies uh, that just sit around, just talking about nice things and talking about them at a surface level. Sometimes you got to listen to me droning on, and that's a podcast, baby. God forbid we do, forbid. and I have done for five years now. But uh, mm. <laughs> it was actually Pete that uh, pushed me to do that, like do that news topic because I was a little bit on the fence. Right, I felt like, what's the point of talking about something if it's going to get like demonetized and then no one will see it? But then it is a really important topic, and of course we're talking about some stuff that happened at a big talent agency. Go and watch it if you haven't, guys. It's a good one. But uh, I just got back from a RV trip, one of Sea Dog VA's oh. big streaming things where he puts loads of Muppets in a van and drives us around uh, a chunk of Japan. Mm. And it was pretty good, actually. We did five days on the road, and I, I'm really injured. I did canyoning. Do you know what canyoning, canyoning is, Pete? Canyoning? Um, uh, it sounds, I mean, it sounds like you were definitely in a canyon, but um, you could have been in anything. <laughs> you could have been in, like, an old, an old uh, like, uh, cage or something, <laughs> just bouncing around a canyon. <laughs> Throwing, throwing, da- throwing down a big waterfall in a barrel. It's not fucking, it's not Planet of the Apes. I don't know what well, your know. imagery you're try- conjuring up. Just trying to figure out what, what canyoning is. Is it, is it, is it, it just is. getting across a canyon without hurting yourself? I don't know. That does sound quite fun. No, it's uh, it's basically like, I think it's in a canyon. It was more like a valley, right. but let's not be okay. pedantic. It was uh, like a, a series of waterfalls and you wear a wetsuit okay. and then you dive in the water and right. you slide down the waterfalls and jump into the different lakes as it goes down, like each waterfall. It's a really right. weird thing, right? Like, but it sounds incredibly dangerous because it is. You have to wear a helmet. Yeah. Uh, and at one point, we went off a 10 metre waterfall. So I yeah. slid off a da- down a 10 into metre waterfall into oblivion, into the water. Yeah, it's not into a, ju- just a load I of just- rocks. Chris, you have to stop listening to Sea Dog VA. You have to stop listening to Connor. Men and women do not belong in canyons. People do not believe <laughs> they do not they do not belong in canyons. If you are in a canyon, if you are in a valley, something bad has happened. You have fallen. Get up, dust yourself <laughs> off, and get out. Stay out of canyons, Chris. All right, I'll stay. Well, I bloody well should because it was kind of ridiculous. Obviously, doing canyoning. You think, mm. oh, I better be careful, health and safety, I could die, I could drown, I could smash my head on a rock. And yeah. yet, ironically, I, the, there's a little jump. To get into the water, to get into the stream, you have to do a little jump. And yeah. you have to take a big leap and cross your arms like this, yeah. and you sort of jump Like in. you would if you were dead. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you would if you were in a coffin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Like you're best, in a coffin. Best case scenario at this point, I'm going to be alive in a canyon. Brilliant. <laughs> well, Sign the, me up. Maybe, maybe the jump is preparation for the coffin, if what all I meant to <laughs> Canyoning goes wrong, but like, yeah, I jumped off the little, the smallest jump, like twenty centimeters, mm. and I sprained my left arm doing just that. <laughs> the first thing I did, what a dickhead! Oh, what an idiot <laughs> I really am! And I don't know what happened. I think I must have like jerked my left arm upwards, jolted, and yeah. it just my, that my whole left side of my body, all my muscles are killing ever since. So yeah. I'm, I'm I'm old. 
Or I should just warm it's, up. It, no, I just I, I don't think it's about. <laughs> no. There's no warming up you can do for falling down a waterfall. There's no possible wow. training you can do for gravity just to roll your ankle. I'm sorry, Chris. I just think <laughs> you're being led astray. When, <laughs> Other than when writing your you, obituary, when, yeah. When, yeah, when me and you were it's in a room together doing a podcast and stuff, we had a nice time. Nobody sprained their ankle. We ordered Starbucks. You hang out with those other bigger boys, they're throwing you down a waterfall, all right? <laughs> Trouble. I want a Braun Japan canyoning edition where Pete and I have to give a commentary as we fall yeah. down a waterfall. It was good. It wasn't as good as I thought it would be, I must admit. I don't know why. Oh, really? It wow. Waiting. It's just a lot of waiting bit, around. A lot, lot of, uh, lot of, uh, sort of, lot of a glass ceiling to sort of break through on that particular experience, isn't there? Yeah. I, was, <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't, wasn't enamoured with, with canyoning. I wouldn't do it no. again. I might, the fact that, that I can't move my left arm still is, is probably part of the reason as to why I don't want to do canyoning again. Mm. But other than that, it was a great trip. I think Connor's going to put some videos out about it. It's like, it was quite fun, the RV trip. We, we also did like pottery, which even I enjoyed mm. for once. I made a big goblet. Um, I, I sort of fucked it up and just made a goblet. I, uh, we rode Tuk Tuk like Indiana to make? Jones. <laughs> what, what were you trying to uh, well, make? You made a, it was I was trying, just trying to make a trying lovely make, um, plate. It was it trying to make the goblet. goblet of fire. No, 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 goblet right. of fire. Goblet of fire from Harry Potter meets Cup of Christ. And yeah. it sort of ended up as neither. Well, so it'll be a good vase one day, put flowers in it at least. <laughs> Rode around a tuk tuk, tuk tuk. Okay, like tuk tuks. Is you seem like you uh, like a tuk tuk. Is it the motorbike one or the the, the little ones you get see in London sometime um, on the bikes, the the bikey tuk tuks? Yeah, or is that just that's the, the one? Or the fellas, right? Okay, all right. It's that. Yeah, yeah. just just right. It's a motorbike with a chair on the back. It's it is all right. Um, but the, you know, the fun is just hanging out with lots of guys, having fun, lads in a car, <laughs> whoa, you know. Oh, it was fun. It was yeah. fun. I, I, it was, for me, I kind of treated it like a holiday because uh, I could sort of switch off, except I absolutely couldn't. I was, I was on a live stream, stream for four or five days straight. Yeah, can't but pick your nose, it was good. can't talk about your real opinions. Um, exactly. Would you say that, um, that, is there a kind of disconnect between um, the, I always think that if I'm on a road trip, I need someone who is more into the road trip than I am. And I would say that possibly <laughs> if you were going to go with natural stereotypes, Obviously, is it Ludwig uh, and and and, That's right. and and is that how you say his name? Um, I, I presume he's American or Canadian or something. He's, he's over that way. Isn't American, he? American, right? And you've got um, Pete, um, and then you've got you and Connor. And obviously, Connor's running the thing, so he's naturally going to be enthusiastic about the project. But I just always mm. sort of think that you need a couple of Americans in the car to just keep things on the rails, <laughs> just keep the momentum moving forward. Because if it was me and you, it would be like. Shall we just get a hotel and go to sleep for six hours? Yes, okay, right, let's do that, fine. <laughs> it's true, it's true. And they did, I mean, American Pete, he's, he's got boundless energy, like a fusion reactor, that man. He's unlimited yeah. energy. We should sort of tap in. If we could, like, Does just put him? American Pete in some water and turn that into steam and harvest that as energy, like, mm. we would have unlimited energy, to be honest. He, yeah. He's got a gift or, or yeah. affliction. I don't know, <laughs> somewhere in between, but... <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah, amazing guys. They carried it as far as I'm concerned. I just turned up and made crass comments every now and then about yeah. Joseph Stalin and J.K. Rowling, and that was my oh. sort of contribution yeah. to the whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> Who's the more controversial character in 2023? Yeah, you decide. Goodness. I, I, wow. I, I, yeah, I, but I, I don't know what my contribution was. But hopefully, if you watched it, guys, hopefully it was fun. Not only that, though, audiobook is finally out. It's out. Hey. You can buy it now. Have you have you bought? It? Have you listened to it? Your you blood, sweat, and your tears, and your vocal cord, po- vocal cord polyps um, have seen <laughs> you well. Uh, you're in a situation where you are uh, reading an audio book that you have slaved over. How long did that take to record? A couple of weeks? A week? Yeah, well, no, it took three, three very long, very abhorrent days in a right. London studio, like in Penguin's mm. sort of headquarters. They've got a studio space, and uh, mm. yeah, it went really well, I think. I, I can't listen to it back. I'm kind of embarrassed normally i'm okay right. with watching back videos with me and whatever but something about the audiobook I've, i really struggled to listen back to it i feel embarrassed you know I, um, but i've just i've just realized know. that i've got a lovely database of almost like a dictionary's worth of uh, ai <laughs> material for my fake oh, chris broad podcast i'm gonna make because <laughs> the audiobook you'll say most words you're ever gonna use that's all yeah, i'm saying yeah. so we'd be able to make a lovely um kind of um patchwork of 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 sentences, words. We could put so many filthy words in your mouth. Fantastic. It's pretty scary. It's pretty scary. Yeah. When AI takes over, it can basically create a <laughs> replica, a digital replica yeah. of me through audiobooks and videos. But 
it's uh, it's out now, guys. If you want to listen to the Abroad in Japan book, and you can't be bothered to hold a physical book, as I can't, to be honest, uh, it's the best way to experience it. Because I'm reading it, I tried to put some emotion into it, but like you, you can't really do that. You're not allowed to sort of be like, as I arrived, I was really sad, but then right. I was really happy because there was food. Like you have to sort of just be one are sort of tone. Are people forgetting, and, and that's why AI will take over. Are people forgetting that you well, are yeah. the bloke who wrote it, the people who are going to be listening to it would presumably be your fans. Um, I think it's disgraceful what so. they're doing. Disgraceful. <laughs> <laughs> well, disgraceful or not, go and check it out, guys. We've got a story this week from... It's a long one. Brian. And Brian. Brian the, the subject of the story is a little bit sketchy. It's called, I've been tw- <laughs> I have been touched twice in one year, oh. exclamation oh. mark. Good God. Uh, Good God. Dear compunctious Chris and propriety, proprietary Pete. God, these tongue twisters are going to be the end of me. I laughed heartily at your recent episode that discussed moments when Japanese have dared to touch random, uh, random foreigners. Did, I don't remember that story. Did, did you remember that story? Did we have a story about Japanese touching random I think, randomly I think foreigners? Um, there was a person who was obsessed with earlobes, I seem to recall. Yeah, that's just oh, how the yeah. podcast goes, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. That was about a month ago. There was a guy in like Osaka or something. People just came up to him and touched his earlobes. I can't remember. Um, and we, we came to the... He was asked... I think he asked, is this normal? To which we very quickly concluded, no, the person you were hanging around with was very, very weird. Um, the story continues. I've now lived in Okinawa for just over a year, and I've started writing a column due to the strange and interesting things that I've seen or experienced. The purpose of the column is to share my experiences with the people of Mississippi back home that would never normally be exposed to the similarities and vast differences of the two cultures. When I heard about the man and his very nice earlobes, it reminded me of two occasions that I was a part of that were very similar. The short version is, when I was at the Sapporo Snow Festival earlier this year, and a drunken college, college-aged college Japanese woman ran up to me and cupped my bushy ginger beard in both hands and screamed, Kuma-san, Mr. Bear, in my face, and then laughed and ran away. I could <laughs> smell alcohol on her breath, admittedly. Uh, I'm sure that I'll... <laughs> I'm sure... <laughs> I'm sure that her boldness was derived from the liquid courage in her bloodstream. The second uninvited touch was nearly a year ago from a new mother of an infant who found out that I had newly arrived to the island of Okinawa. She wanted me to hold her baby. At first, I was flattered, but I soon realised I had nothing to be proud of. She wanted me to hold her baby so it could absorb some of my bacteria in order to strengthen its immune system. Are you fucking... (laughs) Are you kidding? Are you kidding? She explained that she wanted my unique flora and bacteria for her nice. baby. She just wanted me for my dirty, dirty yeah. body. Oh my dirty lord! Body. For weeks after I held his baby, <laughs> for weeks after I held this baby, I was terrified I would have transferred some of my traveller's bug to this baby and would be blamed for getting it sick. Nevertheless, so far so good. All the best, guys. Brian, the bacteria-filled guy with the ginger beard <laughs> Big from Mississippi. Bag of bacteria. Could you not sort of? Um, could you not have done like a when Ric Flair used to uh, wrestle back in the day? Famous wrestler, he, uh, and a lot of wrestlers do. He would sort of, you know, have a little razor blade in his in his oh, God. <clears throat> on his person. He'd cut cut his head and he'd bleed. Um, it's a bit of colour. It's like, oh my God. very dramatic. The crimson mask. I, uh, Could you not have done I, that? At that point, just jammed something into his head. There's bled on the baby. Yeah! <laughs> enjoy Hep C, baby! You're too much bacteria for you! New mothers fear, can't stop touching me! <laughs> I fear <laughs> I fear that's the fast track to uh, deportation, to be honest, yeah. Pete. Uh, You're not newly arrived in Okinawa. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Let's see. Uh, if, if Johnny Somali doesn't get deported... That wouldn't get you deported either. Um, no. This is a, I mean, this is comfortably in the top ten most bizarre stories that we've ever had. Don't you think? Yeah. Like this it's, is. I don't even. I, I mean, like, give me your ridiculous. dirty, dirty body. I mean, I understand it. I understand the logic, but uh, it's a risky game to play, uh, and it's a racist <laughs> game to play as well. For crying out loud! I'm surprised more people haven't used that. To, like it's sort of. As a chat-up line, like, excuse me, excuse me, love, I need some of your bacteria. Could you yeah. come back to my place? Would you like some of my Ugh, bacteria? God. I, I mean, Ugh. if that, I mean, if she's taking this to its logical conclusion, presumably she, that kid's getting bathed in a toilet. <laughs> he's just, <laughs> he's just eating oil off the floor. Like, just the, whatever <laughs> that you can find. Just eating old, old bits of bread that people have left out for the ducks. Like, it's just, <laughs> you know... 
what is this baby <laughs> eating? If she thinks that's normal for crying out loud. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh my God! I mean, I, don't, I, don't. I mean, the the question here, I guess, is you know, have I ever had anything like that? Because it's, some people might be thinking, oh, it's just a Japanese thing. They want mm. the bacteria, or they want to touch the beard. I have never had either of these things happen, thankfully, in no. ten years. Too I clean. think, I think Chris, we call you. Well, clearly Brian's very affable and approachable. Uh, like people just want to be near him. Um, sometimes too near, one might add. <laughs> I just, I've never been, I've, I've never had a beard to be fondled, admittedly. Um, yeah. So that's why. What's but the I'm guessing... part of you? <laughs> if I wanted to get your dirty essence, what would be the dirtiest part of you? It would be, it would be well, surely pits. So you'd go for pits, wouldn't you? You'd rub the baby's head in your pit. Oof. Probably my sense of humour is the dirtiest part of me. I, I love the way this woman just came up to him, cupped his beard and went, Oh, Mr. Bear. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Bear! <laughs> Dirty Kuma Mr. Sam. Bear, Kuma-san. Mr. Bear. <laughs> Fuck me. Well, Lovely. that is... Yeah, what a great story. Um, Keep them coming in. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, Japanese people are generally pretty germophobic, uh, so it's an outlier. This is a really rare yeah. situation. Well done, Brian. Um, <laughs> let me know where I can track down your, uh, your column, because I want to read it. If this is the level of stories you have. Yeah. Like, this is... That's, you've, you've got dirty me excited. Dirty, the dirtiest column in Japan. Dirty but column in Japan. speaking of dirty, dirty columns, over to Pete Donaldson. Pete, oh. what's, what's going on in Japan this week, Pete? Fill us in on the news. Well, you're not going to believe this, um, but <gasps> we've got another racist pub, Chris. Racist ah, pub. Ah, ah, racist ah, pub. Racist pub. Um, yeah. Outside in Izakaya in Naha, the capital city of Okinawa, um, a notice has been posted by the management. At the top was an illustration of a cute uh, yet cheerful samurai um, bowing deeply, as in greeting, but the words below were decidedly less welcoming. The first line of the notice, uh, written in uh, Japanese, translates to, because our staff can only speak at Japanese, which is repeated immediately below in English. Um, we don't allow customers from overseas to enter our bar. Bars with Japanese-only customer policies, are, 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 you know, we've, we've seen it time and time again uh, on the podcast, but they are becoming an increasingly anach- anachronistic as, 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 as we kind of shuffle on down this uh, journey we call life. Um, but they're really, um, it's usually, but it's usually bars that are kind of like, you know, snack bars or like mid, ca- you know, cafes that are basically built towards the Japanese uh, businessman, the, the, the nighttime mm. economy kind of things, rather than just a straight up izakaya. Um, but the notice has been up there um, for, for, for a free year, uh, but it's only just, um, it's only just been sort of picked up by, uh, by, by people who are um, obviously quite hot on this thing. Um, a Naha residence group that reported it to various government departments, including the Tourism Div- D- Division and also the Okinawa Convention Bureau. Uh, and then, obviously, um, the tourist information people um, got in touch with the government. The government got in touch with the police. And the police popped round and said, no more of that, please. Take that sign down. Huh. You cannot exclude people who are Japanese. But the the owner says... It, whenever whenever people um, kind of put these signs up, the owner always goes, oh, that's not actually what we meant, even though we did it. Um, <laughs> the owner claims that the notice wasn't meant to be taken as discriminatory. Uh, be, we only have one person working in the dining hall and one person in the kitchen, so we don't have time to spare for customer interaction. We have no intent of discriminating. Um, and the disclaimer on the sign says that the staff only speak Japanese. Fine, but like, mm. surely you should still be allowing people from outside Japan to actually, you know, come in your place. I think it's big Japanese. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's really rare, this sort of thing. Like, the bars and restaurants where you see Japanese-only signs. I remember the first time I ever saw it was in Golden Guy in Shinjuku, you know, the conglomeration of bars and places. And I remember seeing, like, Japanese-only sign. They didn't elaborate on why. And I think I, I heard from someone that it was because they wanted to appeal to regular customers or they only wanted regular customers coming in. And the vibe was being ruined by foreigners walking in and sort of going, oh, give us a drink, mate. Drink's in it. And they'd be like, yeah. oh, what can I? What can I my son? I guess, you know, there's always this thing, isn't there, where people in Japan want to provide the best service quality. And if they feel like they can't do that, they feel like they're compromising it by not being able to explain the menu or communicate with the customers, then that's an excuse as to why they would use this sign. But, like, really, there's no excuses there. It's sort of just... Uh, th- th- that's tr- that's me trying to explain why this has happened. There's another sign actually p- posted below this one on Twitter or X or whatever the 
bloody hell the platform's cool. There's another sign saying, attention only, Japanese, uh, Japanese only. Um, the shops are busy at Golden Week. I'm sorry, I don't have time to explain, except in Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the sign's actually really well written. So yeah. clearly, put yeah, a lot of effort into the, the sign. sign. Yeah. yeah, I know, right? But this begs the question, right? If it's Japanese only, and the, start, the sign says, uh, you know, uh, because our staff can't can only speak Japanese. If I can speak Japanese, albeit I'm not the best, can mm. I go in the shop? I'm not Japanese. What would happen then? If I walked in, I was like, mm. like would, would it be fine? Or, would, or was yeah. it like, no? I, I think only. it probably would be fine. Conundrum. I think it, surely they've just written the sign, rather. They, they could have said, um, you, you can only order in Japanese. I mean, it's a fucking bar. Let's make that very clear. Mm. I mean, it's quite easy to, to just point at something. You can put a menu out. <laughs> just it just There's well, so yeah. many solutions that could have, instead of double and doon on the actual um, argument you have with the police or the perfection, prefectural authorities, like, just, just put a menu out. There's definitely a thing there. When you walk into a small to medium bar or izakaya in Japan, particularly more rural areas, there is this moment of dread sometimes. We open the door and the staff look up and they go, oh, fuck, you know. Yeah. And the, you I, can I see I the, the door and go, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's what's happening. I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah boy. Peter yeah. Donaldson. Da. Peter <laughs> Donaldson. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to drink you dry. You're going to have to order more drinks here. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, if I saw Pete Donaldson coming to my bar, I would ban all foreigners as well. But no. Yeah, my dear. No. So I, I, I kind of get it. But like, you know, I, I remember the, the last time I think I experienced uh, just not being allowed in a restaurant for, for being foreign. I was, uh, it was on the, the, the day or the night before I started the cycle with Connor. We did the big cycle in Hokkaido last year. About one year ago, actually. Um, the night before, we needed a hearty meal, a big old meal, to power us through the, the first day of the cycle. And we went into a uh, building with a few restaurants, and one of them was a yakitori restaurant, skewered chicken, my favourite. And we opened the door, and there was a, few, a fair few tables. I'd say it was a third busy, but probably 34, 35% busy. And I mm. walked in, and before I could even say two people or three people, he went, no. No, damn it, Asio, damn it. It was like really awkward. It was like, no. And the, the, the sign for uh, not being able to do something in Japan is the cross. They mm. do this. They love Twitter. They love X. They do this. Um, and you, and the wrestler's injured. Yeah. Or, as you saw earlier, if you're, if you're diving into a canyon, you've got to do that yes, as well, right? Yes, exactly. You've got to yeah. do the cross, which no. is how I feel my back's fucked. So that was, the, that was the first time, I, or the last time in memory that I've experienced something like that. Mm. Um, and a lot of staff in restaurants do ask, oh, the Hongo, what kind of car, like, can you speak Japanese? And on occasion, if you're like, no, they're kind of like, oh, we're, we're a little bit full. It can happen. It's very rare. Very rare. It's like one in a hundred times you might experience something like that. Um, but honestly, do you really want to go in a restaurant that says Japanese only? Because they're probably not that welcoming in the first place anyway. So lucky escape. Go to McDonald's instead. Or a better <laughs> Izakaya. But I'm yeah. telling you now, it's so rare. And I... People worry about it a lot more than they than they have to. And the they fact do, we're yeah. reporting on it in a podcast news story, you know, this is how rare it is. But yeah, you might see a sign. Don't don't be offended by it, unless, it, it, yeah, don't be offended. But the only one that the only one that really pissed me off was uh, when COVID kicked off. They had that ramen shop in uh, Ueno, the other side of Tokyo, and it was like, no foreigners, you have COVID, and that. That was that yeah. was the time that really annoyed me because it wasn't about awkward language customer service. It was just downright racism and more, di <laughs> more dirty, dirty microbe stuff. Yeah, I didn't like that. That was very and very ridiculous. But there you go. So don't worry, guys. You don't have to worry about it. You'll be fine. And uh, just despite this is a car, we should go down there, Pete. Go down, is go down to Okinawa. Get in there. Speak exclusively French and the <laughs> language of love. <laughs> Perfect. That's enough yeah. to have anyone thrown out. Uh, we're back to swimming, guys. These are stories, comments, and questions in the fax machine. Wow. And we're back with the fax machine. What have we got this week from our listeners? Mr. Donaldson. We got a message from Katie from Lincoln in the UK. After recently getting engaged at the Kyoto Gardens in London, my fiance and I are due to head out of Japan at the start of October this year. Both of us are smokers. 
but mainly vape as opposed to traditional cigarettes. My question is, what are the rules around vaping in Japan? Can you even buy them over there? Has it reached the popularity it has here in the UK? All the best, Katie. Pretty much any high street you go down these days, um, there will be cash converters and about five different yeah. vape shops, different bits That's of right. mobs selling them. Um, I, I Last time I was there, nobody seems to vape. Is that fair, Chris? They're all tab monsters. Yeah. I think um, I... Um... I know Natsuki tried it for a little bit, and he was like, but I think he lasted for about a week, and then he was like, it's rubbish, and he went back to cigarettes. He wants the more powerful <laughs> kick from cigarettes. Um, right. I, I remember I vaped very briefly when it all kicked off, when it, vaping became a thing like mm. seven, eight years ago. I did it briefly, and it actually, for some reason, it really hurt my lungs in a way right. that cigarettes didn't. I don't know why. I don't know the logic. I don't know. But you went but for the petrol um, flavour. <laughs> like, you love the smell of petrol, and you went, I just want the petrol flavour. <laughs> I think it was just it was, petrol, Chris. Well, I mean, vape is well known for its flavours. I think I had asbestos and strawberry jam. And, um, <laughs> yeah, it the, really hurt. I remember breathing. It was pain, pain. Just my, pain. My mate, big fan of uh, vaping, and he tried to find some, I was about, probably about five years ago, tried to find some um, vape juice in um, Tokyo. And we found some, but it didn't actually contain any nicotine. It was just, just for fun. <laughs> just for fun, Chris. <laughs> Which is quite exciting. <laughs> That's not good. Nobody wants fun. Um, I think no. vaping, it's the same rules as cigarettes, isn't it? I think uh, you've got to go outside. You've got to go designated cigarette spots. Yeah. Um, on, officially. I don't think Natsuki cares. Natsuki, Natsuki abides by the rules to a certain extent. But he's then punk rock. You're, you what? He's punk rock. He, he thinks he's... Um, he thinks he's well, yeah. Um, I was going to say Jack Daniels. What? <laughs> I th- for some reason, I thought... Uh, for, for a second, I was thinking, right, who was in the Sex Pistols? Yeah, Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels. <laughs> Jack, he's the Jack Daniels of the Sex Pistols, is that um, Yeah. Oh, dear. You're going to... Yeah, but you'll have to try and, like, find the smoking areas. Most places have them. So uh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. I remember when you could vape on a plane. I remember... Or, or, or you couldn't, but the person next to me was. Well, I... I came up from the Bahamas on a plane from Bahamas to London once, and I was sitting next to this woman, and she was just smoking this vapey, vaping away. And I remember she let me have some, and I felt yeah. really cool. That was the coolest I've ever felt, sitting on the back of a British Airways plane, vaping away. We've got a story from John from Oregon. He says, hello, conscientious Chris, and philanthropic, philanthropic Pete. Uh, I'm going to Japan. <laughs> philanthropic Pete. What have you done recently for charity, Pete? What have you done? Uh, just didn't talk to them for a bit. I think I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to Japan in early November, and knowing that cannabis is highly illegal in Japan, I was curious if I should answer honestly uh, when asked what I do for work. I work in a laboratory where I make cannabis extracts and concentrates. That's pretty cool. Is there still a massive stigma in Japan surrounding the herb? Should I lie and say I do some other kind of work, or do you think it would be met with curiosity and questions that I can't answer given my limited knowledge of the Japanese language. Love all the work you do. Listen to the podcast. All the best, guys. Uh, John from Oregon. I think people will be in awe, actually. I think they'll be like, what? Oh, my God, how? How is this possible? You know, I think most people in Japan are curious about cannabis and marijuana. Like, they're kind of curious. And, um, yes. yeah, I, th- I, I think, I think you'll be cool. I think you'll, you'll get a free drink. Going to a bar. I think so, yeah. I think it's I think yeah. it's seen as being quite naughty and cheeky. Mm. Uh, people smoking weed, obviously, in a place where you get in a lot of trouble if you if you take it. If you... <laughs> I think the question is, what would John's fake job be, though? I think I think if you're talking to someone over fear, if you're talking to someone over fifty or sixty, then they might be a little bit like, oh, oh my god, that's so bad. But also, mm. it's legal outside of Japan and America and a lot of other countries that are smart. Yeah. It's legal, right? And so. What's bad? What, while it's illegal here, it's still legal overseas, and I think Japanese people don't see it as bad. Therefore, if it's legal elsewhere, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's fine. I'd be curious to find out. Actually, I know Natsuki would probably be keen to do it. Um, Why well, he's not done it in Japan? I think he might have done it overseas once, but I can neither <laughs> confirm nor deny. But um, no. <laughs> and it ended badly. Yeah. Um, but anyway, badly. but but ended very badly. God, what awful! But anyway, I think John, if you're going to come over here and lie about your job. Say you're an astronaut, or uh, you work closely with the president, because they believed my students believed that I was friends with the Queen. So oh. anything's possible. They're closer to, to her than I am. Got quite a nice <laughs> accent. 
I thought you meant in death or something. Why are you closer to her <laughs> than I am? <laughs> we'll be with her soon. Sinister boy. We got one last question from Jack, who says, Hello, Cheddar Cheese, Chris and Pickle Pete. My girlfriend is from Nagoya. Oh, no, oh. not Nagoya. Oh, chicken wing land. That is a shame. That is a shame. Land of chicken wings, but not much else. I've always enjoyed sending her clips of you roasting Nagoya. Keep up the fantastic work. She lives in the UK now. Uh, I mean, to be fair, the UK is still worse than Nagoya. So uh, Nagoya, Nagoya wins on that front. She lives in the UK now. And when someone asks where she's from, she replies, I'm from the Birmingham of Japan. My mm. questions are, what cities in Japan remind you of other cities in the world? And when is the Nagoya video coming out? I would watch it five times at least. Jack from London. P.S. I actually like Nagoya. Well, Jack, you'll have to do a follow-up email letting us know what there is to do in Nagoya because I'll be damned yeah. if I know. That's, and you've nice... never been, right? I've been to Nagoya. I had have to you? see what was going on down there. Um, oh. And I went to a nightclub that was full of um, South American people and oh, yeah. I saw a statue of a dog. And that's all I can really remember from my trip to Nagoya. But it wasn't as bad as you sort of made out, to be quite frank, Chris. And I think you should apologise to the people of Nagoya. But I've already, I've already Gary Lineker. said Nagoya is better than the UK. And yeah. that's a pretty big compliment. And also, yeah, Gary Lineker, <laughs> the footballer, he was part of Nagoya, Nagoya <laughs> Football Club once. So it must be good. Yeah. Um, but what other cities in Japan remind you of cities in the world? I guess Osaka is like, Osaka is the Manchester of Japan. Yeah, maybe? Brighton. The Brighton, uh, excuse me, uh, yawning. <laughs> Osaka is the um, Brighton of Japan. Yeah, because it's like there's a there's a bit of water kicking around. Um, <laughs> it is um, everyone's quite chill, uh, and it's a bloody good night out. So there you that go. is true. It's a very good night. But out. it but it has yeah. the size of the second city, Man- Manchester, maybe. Liverpool, maybe. I don't know. New, New, mm. Newcastle. It's a good party town next to the water. It's got a bloody great big river through it. Beautiful. It's Newcastle. <laughs> I always struggle with Sendai. Sendai is known as the Seattle of Japan. Um, it's got a similar <laughs> climate, similar population, similar sort of in the sort of nice countryside surrounding it, mountains and sea, coastal city. Yeah, that's, that was always the, the Seattle of, of Japan. So that's Sendai. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's probably it. I don't know what the Nagasaki of the Nagasaki of England is. Which <laughs> Devon, Devonshire. I don't know. It's complicated. But all I know is. I should I should go to Nagoya and give it a chance. We'll make it happen mm. sometime in the next five years. We'll do it. I promise. Keep the stories, questions, comments coming in to Born Japan Podcast at gmail.com. We'll be back later in the week, guys, to do it over again. But for now, no matter where you might be out there in the big wide world, have yourself a great few days. We'll see you right back here to do it all over again on the Abroad Japan Podcast. Bye for now and by the audio. Book. Audio. Book. By the audio book. Bye. Bye.